If you are starting the journey to make healthy food choices to lose weight, fight disease, slow down aging, or any other reason besides your doctor telling you to do so, stay tuned. I'm going to give you three reasons why you should not expect support from the people around you and why that's really not such a bad thing. Welcome everyone, my name is Marcus Bailey, and my goal is to help as many people as possible not only make the decision to take control of their health and wellness, but give you tips, tricks, and resources to help you stick to it and make it enjoyable. So if you're thinking about or have already made the decision to make voluntary dietary choices, what kind of things can you expect from other people? What will they say? How will they support you? Will they support you? Does it even matter? And why is it important to distinguish voluntary dietary and health choices from involuntary dietary and health choices? Well, first things first, let's discuss the reason why we're gonna talk about voluntary changes versus involuntary or mandatory changes. And by mandatory, I mean things like doctor's orders, changes that you're making after a recent health scare, religious observations, and things like that. The reason why we're gonna talk about it differently is because you simply get a different reaction when you're doing things as a result of being mandated by a doctor or if you're doing it as a part of a religious practice. Let's say you're out with a group of friends. Everyone orders pizza and you choose a salad. Someone asked, are you on a diet or something? Why are you ordering a salad? You may respond, well, I'm doing a Daniel fast with my church or my doctor put me on a strict diet after my heart attack. Maybe I've got a procedure coming up and I need to eat certain things leading up to that. People won't challenge you on that much. They'll probably give you a thumbs up, wish you luck and move on. The other reason why this video will deal with voluntary versus involuntary changes is the way that your mind deals with it and the way that you process it. We'll deal with this differently in another video in more detail, specifically around mindset, but essentially it's a lot easier and more comfortable to make a good choice versus a bad choice when it's being dictated by a doctor or as a part of a religious practice. Other people respond differently and so do you. Now, let me be clear. The purpose of this video is not for you to be skeptical about the choices that you've made. In fact, I want you to be comfortable and feel good about the choices that you've made to take control of your health and wellness. The reason for this video is so that you can be prepared for some of the things that you're gonna hear. If you can be prepared for it, it's gonna feel a lot more natural and it's gonna feel a lot more welcome when you hear it. A, it lets you know that you're on the right path and B, when you hear things along your journey, you're gonna know that you're doing the right thing because other people are taking notice. Just know that everything that we talk about in this video, I've heard before over the years of my health journey, and I'm just simply letting you know these things in advance. Reason number one, people don't know what they don't know. It sounds simple enough, but think about it this way. Three years ago, one year ago, six months, maybe three weeks ago, you didn't know something that made you wanna change your diet, your workout plan, and start a fitness journey. Before you knew, you didn't know. Before you felt this way, you didn't feel this way. Maybe it's the frustration of walking up a flight of stairs and getting winded and tired when you know you shouldn't. Maybe it's the scary feeling of seeing someone 10 years older than you dealing with health issues that you would like to avoid or that maybe you see yourself going towards. Or maybe it's the panic of seeing someone younger than you dealing with health issues and events that you yourself are scared that you might have to face. You might have read a book, watched a documentary, or had a personal experience that caused that spark that made you wanna take control of your health and wellness. No one else around you had that same feeling at the same time. So it's okay to start that health journey by yourself, even if your friends, family, coworkers, spouse, neighbors don't agree or maybe don't care. Let me know below in the comments, what was that spark, that feeling, that thought that you had that made you wanna take control of your health and wellness? What book was it? What movie was it? What personal experience did you have? There's a saying, if you're waiting for all the lights to turn green before you go somewhere, you'll never leave the driveway. If I would've waited for everyone around me to watch the same things I watched, study the same things I studied, watch the same lectures that I watched, and have that same feeling to take control of my health and wellness, I still would've been stuck there where I was then. Still 75 pounds heavier, still dealing with the same health issues that everyone else my age was dealing with. Let's look at it from a different angle when it comes to what people don't know. The extent of most people's health and nutrition knowledge comes from TV commercials that are paid for by food companies. I know I was the same way. So if someone's preferences are to drink two sodas per day, they probably aren't studying the effects of sugary beverages on the endocrine system and its contribution to insulin resistance. So we really aren't surrounded by many people who have taken physiology courses, studied evidence-based nutrition, or take an unbiased approach towards health and wellness. So as you begin to study, learn, and understand how every step and every bite contributes towards your well-being, 
you become the expert within your circle of family and friends. Because you know more than what other people know, you can't really expect them to take the same steps that you take and be on board with what you're doing. So the first reason why you should not expect people to support you out the gate is because they simply don't know what they don't know. And until they learn, read, watch, whatever it is that got you started on your health and wellness journey, they'll probably sit it out on the sidelines. Reason number two, supporting you exposes me. Acknowledging you acknowledges me. We know ourselves and we just know how people are. One of the challenging aspects of human tendency and behavior is having a hard time seeing someone else do what we may be too lazy, too shy, too scared, or too comfortable to do for ourselves. Now, let's not read too far into that, but for the purposes of reason number two and diet and exercise, let's dig into it a little bit deeper. Imagine you go to a restaurant with a group of people. The server comes out, starts to take drink orders, Mountain Dew, Pepsi, sweet tea, gets around to you, oh, I'll have a water. Server comes back, puts everyone's drink down in front of them, and then starts taking food order. I had the Philly cheesesteak, cheeseburger with fries. Let me get the cheeseburger with the onion rings. All of a sudden, you order the spinach salad with vinaigrette dressing and a side plain baked potato. Each person should definitely be able to order whatever it is that they want and whatever it is they feel good about. My experience has taught me over and over and over again that it's not going to be the person that ordered the salad that starts looking down on everyone else's food. It's going to be quite the opposite. Is that rabbit food? I know you want to eat some of this. You only live once. There's nothing wrong with eating a burger now and again. You can walk outside and get hit by a car, so you may as well live a little. That doesn't even look good. My grandmother ate like this every day of her life and she lived to be 93. There's nothing wrong with it as long as it's in moderation. And on and on and on and on and on. These unsolicited comments are things that I've heard so many times over and over again. You'll hear them too if you haven't already. The goal a lot of times is to make you feel uncomfortable. Somehow make you feel abnormal about your choices and have you going on the defensive. Well, I'm trying to lose 10 pounds. Oh, I just started a new meal plan. And I want you to know that this is not because you were doing something wrong. When you make a choice that's opposite of the crowd, the rest of the crowd feels uncomfortable. Had you ordered the same thing as everyone else, it probably wouldn't have been a big deal. So that's why you may not get that pat on the back or at a boy when you make good healthy food choices. So because of reason number two, it can sometimes feel like you're kind of stranded alone on a desert island. Before I go to reason number three, let me reassure you, the first two reasons are not bad. And it certainly doesn't mean that you're surrounded by bad people. Look at the data and the statistics and consider what is normal in today's world. It's okay and you should be excited about doing something that is abnormal when it comes to your own health and wellness. So finally, reason number three, and this is probably the most important reason why you should not expect support from the people around you as you start your health journey. It's not because you don't want people to cheer you on. It's not because you don't want people to support and love you as you get started. And it certainly isn't because you don't want praise and recognition when you start to see the results of your hard work. The third reason why you should treat this health journey as a solo endeavor is because if you need someone to help you get started, you're going to need someone to help you keep going. If it takes someone rooting you on to help make good food choices, what happens when that person's not around? The closer and the sooner you get to self-accountability, the easier it's going to be to stay committed to your health journey long term. We will cover this in later videos, but people really do want to support you. They really just don't know how. People would love to make these changes with you, but they're too emotionally tied to their current habits. They would love to feel better and look better long term, but they can't really see past their next bite. So it's very important for me to let you know that the more self-confident, self-determined you are as you get started, the better chance you have of having long-term and consistent results. If you found value in this video, please hit like and subscribe. My goal is to give you practical and straightforward information to do something great for yourself, and that's make an investment in your own health and wellness. Make sure that you're getting notifications so that you can keep all the aspects of your health journey and focus. Meals, movement, and mindset. Thanks for watching. See you next time.